party place, young fella. Used to be the show place of the town. Say, it's a good buy for the money. They do, do they? Well, we'll see. Aren't you going to drive on up? Yes. Yeah. Gates won't work. How far did you say it was from the station? Two miles. <laughs> Reckon you're not used to rough roads. <laughs> well, the roads didn't look so bad. But this Lizzie of yours certainly makes mountains out of molehills. You used to belong to Edgar Allen Party. The car? No, the house. You must have heard of him, ain't you? Wrote over 40 books. That's a powerful lot of writing. Uh, be a pal and take that to the hotel, will you? Sure, sure. Nice situation, ain't it? I suppose so. I'll be able to see better when my foot wakes up. Well, so long. So long. How I became a yogi. Nirvana Reach. Yogi Catechism. Rule number six. The student should at all times be surrounded by fresh flowers. Rule number seven. Clear the head and refresh the mind. Water should be drunk through the nose each morning. Oh! <laughs> the plum, I... Why, well, I'm sorry. Oh, that's Hindustani I... for many greetings. Oh, thank you. Same to you. Uh, if you're looking for Portia, she's probably in the kitchen. Nice day. Hey? Hey, who? Oh, well, uh, never mind. I don't. Why should I? Throw me downstairs. Oh, I thought certainly. There, are you comfortable? Eh? I asked, are you comfortable? 
No use asking me. Nobody around here ever asked me anything. Hey! Look, a domestic Ladaria, the best polyopterous specimen I have. Well, uh, is it really a, a domestic uh, lion? Ladaria, sure it is. Isn't he a pit? Are you certain it's a he? Of course. You notice those markings on the horny cases which cover the membranous hind wings? Well, those are... Where's Portia? Oh, she's probably in the kitchen. Oh, of course. Had breakfast? Well, I... Right. One box of tapioca. Five cans of beans. Are you sure that's all the beans there are, Minnie? Yep. Since that's all we've been having lately, it's a wonder there's that many. Five pounds of rice. My mistake, no rice. Where's the bride? Oh, I'm so sorry. But it's only rice and it'll brush right off. Good thing it wasn't flour, though. Or molasses. You really Mr. Must Henley brought me up and... I'm I so said sorry, the man brought me up. Oh, you first. But I was just trying to apologize for your shower. Oh, that's all right. Now I know how it feels to be a bride. I rang the bell an awful lot of times. It doesn't work. Oh. Then a girl sent me upstairs to the rug. Oh, the rug. Oh, the rug. <laughs> well, I, I'm terribly sorry. I sold the rug yesterday. Did you? Gee, Portia, if we've got any money, can I have some? I need a new mountain slab for my laboratory. If you get any money, which I think you won't, you can give me the dollar and a half you owe me. Oh, gee, Minnie, every time I borrow money from you, you keep reminding about it as if I weren't going to pay you. I, I'm so sorry about the rug, Mr. Mr. Oh, Smith. Graham Smith. And you're Portia Prouty? Yes. Well, I didn't come for the rug. You didn't? No, I wanted to see the house. It is for sale, isn't it? Oh, yes. Only it's been for sale for so long. Oh, well, well, that is, uh, property around here is going up. Is it? Yes, indeed. There's a rumor that some manufacturing company has bought some acres on the river for a factory. Well, it's more than a rumor. My firm bought the property. Then that's who you work for. Well, yes, in a way. They don't want to buy this place for a factory or anything, do they? No. They thought it might be suitable for uh, the owner to live in. Oh. Well, hello. Did you find them? This is my sister, Juliet. This is Mr. Smith. He's interested in the property, Julie. Not really. Huh? Doesn't seem possible, does it? <laughs> we all feel that way about the old home. We were born here, you see. Well, then perhaps I'd better look elsewhere. Oh, no, no. I should say not. Portia just meant to kind of get a tactful place. Yes, that's it. Well, I'd hate to be the one to, uh... Oh, Lucy. Out. This is Mr. Smith. My other sister, Lucretia Prouty. How do you do? Mr. Smith's firm is interested in the house. Oh. An agent. Yes, uh... Well, that's it. An agent. An agent. Good morning, children. Good morning, Mother. Good morning, Good morning Mother. Good morning, Minnie. Good morning. It's a beautiful morning, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Mother, this is Mrs. Smith, my mother. How do you do? How do you do, young man? I see you found Portia. <laughs> By the way, is the hotel any good? No. Many means the hotel isn't very good. You'd be better boarding with a private family. Oh, perhaps you know of a family I could board with. No, I don't. You can stay here if you like. How much would you like to pay? Well, uh, say, uh, well, how would $25 a week be? Oh, that's much too... That'll be all right. It would cost my firm a lot more if I stayed at the hotel. Then, of course, if you stay here, you can find out whether or not the house is suitable for your firm. Exactly. There, that's settled.
Now, Mr. McFadden says that physical culture is the only... Oh, way. I'm so sick of physical culture and biology that I could scream. Every time I make myself a dress, oh, I have to... Mr. Free, Lucretia. Did you ever make me that dress out of the blue loincloth I gave you? Broadcloth, Mother. Blue broadcloth. Oh, well, no matter. <laughs> Did you ever... Good morning, Uncle. Good morning, Uncle. That's Uncle Andy. He's deaf. And you better look out for him. He grabs. Like that. Mr. Dawson's coming. Should you do that, Lucretia? Now, when your father was alive... Oh, Mother, she only does it because Victoria Vandergrift does. There's nothing so bad for the health. Biologically speaking, Lucy, there isn't an... Oh, uh, this Victoria Vandergrift. Is she a nice girl, Lucretia? Well, I met Victoria at finishing school, Mother. They've taken the Addison estate for the season. Oh, by the way... It might interest you all to know that the Vanderpilts are the accepted social leaders here. They are planning to entertain Lord Michael Renfrew next week. Oh, good morning, Ronald. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Are you good morning. Good morning. Had your breakfast? Yes, thanks, boy. I left the city. Take a little coffee. Oh, meet Mr. Smith, Mr. Dawson. How do you do? How do you do? Did I understand you to say that the Vandergrifts are here, Lucy? Yes, do you know them? Well, slightly. Met them at Newport last year. Charming girl, Victoria. You found me too. Well, I am, rather. Worth about 20 million, aren't they? So I've heard. Lovely girl, Victoria. I'd like to see her again. Oh, uh, my dear, why don't you invite this Victoria Van Grift over sometime? Mother, really, you must admit that things aren't quite the same as they were when Father was alive. To say that we've drifted socially is hardly the word. Well, uh, biologically speaking... I wasn't speaking biologically. Ronald won prizes for boxing. How interesting. And he's the heavyweight champion of the Clover Club. Yes, and he's won all kinds of badges, haven't you, Ronald? Medals, Mother. Well, now, really, Mr. Smith, don't get the idea that I'm sort of a Max Berry, you know. I won't. Oh, uh, Mrs. Crowdy, I still haven't any news of the boys. The boys? Why, he's even older than Portia. That's our brother, Edgar. When he was 15, he turned up missing right after the circus left town. Ah, uh, mark my words. That boy has made something of himself by now. Have you heard from him? Well, uh, no, but he has his father's name and the same shape too. Well, this isn't getting my lepidopter mounted. Well, uh, tell me, Ronald, did you come all the way from town just to tell me you'd had no news of Edgar? No, as a matter of fact, as uh, your attorney and executor of the state, I came to talk business. Oh, oh, by, by all means. Oh, Portia, dear, Ronald wants to talk business. And now, if you'll excuse me, this is my hour for meditation. Say, how'd you like to see my chair? It'd be more point to if you showed Mr. Smith the house. Oh, all right. Then I'll see you later? Of course. And you? Well, I'm afraid I have to get back to town. Thank you. You're welcome. Come on, hurry. Odd sort of chap, isn't he? I think he's nice. Well, let's get down to business, shall we? All right. Well, this is the library. Oh. Oh, and there's a book. Do you want to see upstairs? Oh, yes, uh, there's some of it I didn't see. Okay, come on. Isn't it odd that the sales have fallen off so tremendously? Well, there's no accounting for the public's taste. But the royalties used to be so, well, so comfortable. And now, my poor father. And he thought he'd left us so well fixed. Well, there's no use crying about it, is there? We'll just have to manage somehow. You're a brave girl, Portia. And you'll pull through all right. Of course we will. Goodbye, Ronald, and thanks. Goodbye. Is he gone? Yes, he's gone. Where's my breakfast? If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, teeny, miny, mo. There's your room. I hope 
wondered what Mother did with them. Look, I'll have Portia do something about it. Oh, no, uh, not that. Don't bother her. I'll get rid of them. Well, as you like. It's a nice house. Do you think it'll be suitable for your firm? Well, yes. Uh, it has possibilities. Is it bigger than this place? No. About the same size. And of course, it hasn't a view. Well, no, after all, the view is the most important thing. Oh. Portia. Yeah. Well, well, I... Are you going to help me with my hemiptera? Well, not tonight, Alan. I, I have other plans. You have an appointment. Please don't bother with the dishes. Oh, that's all right. Do you want to see my bryobri up the No. Oh. The funny part about it is I found it right in the spot where you were reading all afternoon. And you never saw it. Well, I, I wasn't looking for your high board. Well, the thingamajig. He was looking for houses. Well, if you do want to see it, it's upstairs. We do have an appointment. You, you needn't, needn't bother, bother with, with the dishes. dishes. Yeah, I know. You said that before. But I haven't an appointment. Miss Prouty, would you care to take a walk with me after dishes? Graham, have you seen the Cole Estate or have you? How about the walk? When are you going to see it? I'm not. Are you going to take a walk with me? You're not. Are you going to take a walk with me? Or say, did I say that before? Why not? Not what? Graham, why aren't you going to see the Cole Estate? Oh, that! <laughs> I decided to take this place, so why bother looking at other houses? You're really going to buy the house? Mm-hmm. But you suppose they'll like it when they come to see Oh, they like anything I pick out. Clothing, houses, cars, anything. You'll get a nice commission out of it, won't you? But of course, that isn't any of my business. I only thought... Well, well I it is your business, Portia. Well, that is. Hey, Greg! I'd like it to be. Look, so, you be a darling and pick one of my rings for me. It's the one next to the one you fixed yesterday. Well, surely, Julie. I'll fix it the first thing in the morning. Yeah, can't you fix it tonight? I, I want to practice a new trick, and I can't do it with all that leather stuff hanging on. Go ahead, Graham. I'll finish the dishes. Gee, thanks, Portia. Hurry up. Don't forget our walk, Portia. I have something very important to ask you. I will. Portia! Would you mind doing the other? Of course not. Well? I'll go fix Julie's rings. Uh, you won't be long, will you? I won't. And don't forget your apron. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Well, you don't seem to be doing so badly. Mimi, well, you're just a type, Mrs. Smith. I'm on my way to the Vandergrift. Party for Lord Michael. And you look lovely for him. I'll say he does. I hardly think I'd care to arrive at Well, I could let you off a little way from the house, if you like. Well, it would save my slippers, wouldn't it? All right. I'll be down in a minute. Do you think Lucy will ever care for me, Portia? I mean, in a big way? No. As long as you let her make such a sap out of you, she'll never care for you. Why didn't you tell her you didn't care if she ever saw you again? Well, I couldn't do that, Portia. She might get mad at me. Besides, I do care. But I don't think there's any hope. was the fastest record ever achieved by a woman. Now, you take a net Calvin, for instance. You take her. I've got to get some tape. Okay.
I'm sorry, Bob. But it's for your own good. I know Lucy used to be fond of you. I think she still is. But all women like their feeling, Bob. Why, a little flirtation now and then doesn't the world is good. It's nice to know somebody else is interested, even if you don't intend to take them seriously. But love doesn't change. Now, mind you, I'm not saying Lucy ever was in love with you. But if she was, she still is. And it would help a lot if you showed a little spunk now and then. Well, I don't know if I can, but anyhow, thanks a lot. Well, I'm ready. Good night, Roger. Good night, dear. Have a good time. Come along, Mom. Good night, Roger. Good night, Bob. Julie. Yeah? Who was that I just saw in the kitchen? Well, no, I wouldn't know exactly. Did you have red hair or was he wearing a long gray beard? No, he was a young man. A very nice looking young man. Oh, Bob. Bob Miller. He's always around. He seems to be very much interested in your sister, doesn't he? Interested? I'll say he is. He's been nuts about her for years. And she? Oh, I don't know. She used to be crazy about him, too. Anyway, she'll probably marry him if she can't do any better. Oh. Well, there you are. Oh, gee, Graham, thanks a million. Well, I'm all ready. Ready? Yes. Yeah. You have to take a walk. Oh, yes. Yes, a walk. Of course, if, if you're busy or anything. Oh, no. Oh, no, by all means, let's uh, take a walk. used to seem to like me. Oh, this is all very silly, Bob. I told you a thousand times that there's nobody I like better than you. I just wasn't made for poverty. But I won't always be poor. I know I'm only a bank clerk, but I will get somewhere. Well, that's exactly what I mean. All the years of planning and scrimping and working, I just couldn't do it. Anyway, I've got a party to get to. Thanks for the buggy ride. Oh, no, please don't. Hadn't I better walk up with you? Certainly not. Good night, Bob. Lucy! Good night. And Uncle Andy, uh, how much of a relative is he? To tell you the truth, I don't really know. I've always thought he was father's uncle. Has he always been paralyzed? No. The funny thing. Father was ailing during his last year, and he had to get that chair. And right after his death, Uncle Andy had a stroke, and he's been using it ever since. Well, here we are. Yes, so we are. We didn't take a very long walk, did we? No, we didn't, did we? No. No. Lovely evening, is it? Huh? Lovely evening. Well, don't shout. You think I'm deaf? Well... I guess I shouldn't have mentioned it. Oh, there you are, Portia. Yes, Mother. Portia, my dear, will you be good enough to gather the entire family together in the drawing room? I have an announcement of importance, please. You too, young man. Of course, Mother. Oh, that's Hindu for Abyssin. Mother, please, it is. That's uh, one of you missing, isn't that? Lucy, mother, she's gone to a party. Oh, sir. then I shall proceed with the future. I'm going to write a book. Hmm. Will there be any money in it? Why don't you write about biology, mother? And I'll help you. The world is just crying for a good book. Athletics from a woman's angle is a swell title. Why don't children? you? Children, children. My subject has already been decided upon. I'm going to write a book of poetry. I feel that I have the poetic soul. And this is what I have already done. The title is, Ah, Ecstasy. <coughs> <coughs> ah, Ecstasy, what rapture do I know to feel that naught can stay my hand or hinder. To hear the birds that sing upon the bough each morn when I fling open wide my window. 
that window. So at my open casement every morning of the week, I stand in joyous wonder at the little birds that peep. I think it's a song. I think it's a burst. Of course, weak and peak don't exactly rhyme, but that's for its life. Do you have to buy one? No, it's a pity, but you don't. Well, my tooth feels worse. I think it's nice, Mother. Why don't you send it to some magazine? Oh, no, I'm going to keep them all for a book. You think they'll keep that long? Mom! Cat, you look swell, Mom. Why, you ain't changed a bit in ten years. But, Edgar, surely you'll stay to dinner or breakfast or something. Dinner or breakfast, Mom? Why, I'm here to stay. I'm through with shipping. Me but a country life with my family. Oh, my <laughs> boy. <laughs> well, if it ain't 40. Ha, ah, well, 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 well. <laughs> and Lucy. Uh, no, Julie, Edgar, Julie. Hi, kid. Hello. Hey, that ain't Ellen. Is yes, it? that's Alan. What well, can you imagine, Dad? Why, the last time I seen you, you were just starting to stew. Well, have no relation. Pleased to meet you anyway. Well, how do you do? Uh, that is, uh, pleased to meet you. Hey, Mom, Porter, come over here. <laughs> Sit down. Tell me what you've been doing all this time. Oh, uh, you we want to hear about Edgar? Yes. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. The first job I got was with a circus, carrying water for the elephant. The biggest one there, name was Jumbo. Me and him got to be great pals. Well, that's nice. <laughs> See, Grant? Yes, sir. You know, I think it's charming. Yes, it is nice here now. It's very dull here. Really? I should have thought it would have been jolly with the snow and all. Well, really, I don't know much about it. You see, we usually went to elsewhere. Hello, Victoria. This is a simply charming party. I hope so. Everybody does seem to be having a good time, or at least being very polite about it. Do be nice and say you're having a good time, Michael. Oh, I'm having the most delightful time imaginable. I only hope Miss Prouty isn't exhausted entertaining me. I shan't bother to answer that. That reminds me, Lucy. I'm going to give you first chance to entertain Michael informally. When would you like him to dinner? Oh, why, that's lovely of you, Victoria. But I'm sure Lord Michael has far too much to do already. Oh, not at all, Miss Prouty. I should be delighted to come. Of course he would. I do want him to have a gay time, Lucy. And I'm sure he's going to be bored to death with all these receptions. What did you say tomorrow night be convenient? Oh, but I shouldn't dream of doing that, Victoria. You see, after all, Lord Michael is your guest, and uh, I wouldn't dream of taking him away from you. That's awfully sweet of you, Lucy. But I'm afraid that having all of us is rather an imposition. Oh, no, no, no. I, I didn't mean that. You see, I just meant that... Well, if you insist. I'll accept for Mother. And I know Marjorie will love it. That'll be, uh, four of it? No, five. There's Dad, you know. Oh, of course, of course, there's Dad. Mother will phone your mother in the morning. That's splendid. Uh, would you care to... Uh... Certainly not. You simply can't dance with the same girl all night, Michael. I've got to circulate you. You'll excuse me, Lucy? Uh, I'm sorry. May I have this dance, Lucy? Huh? May I have this dance? Oh, yeah. Uh, excuse me, please. I, I don't feel so well. I don't want So here we was, cut off from our supplies by the knee, and them beating drums, and closing in all around us. And all of a sudden, we heard a big noise. And what do you think it was? A mountain lion. On the Malay Peninsula? No, it was Jumbo. And you think that baby didn't know me? What did he do? Do? Why, he carried every last one of us straight back to the camp. And there we got to the ship. And the last thing we saw as we pulled out was Jumbo, standing on the shore trumpeting. What the hell did he get it? Get what, Mom? The trumpet. Oh, that's the noise they made. Oh, gee, it's be exciting to be a Marine. 
I tell the world. You all knew I was in the Marines, didn't you? Oh, no, we didn't, Edgar. Well, I saw Uncle Andy in the city one day about three years ago. We only had a couple hours before we shipped for Pango Pango. And I talked to him for an hour. Why didn't you tell us, Uncle Andy? Huh? Why didn't you tell us you saw Edgar? Did you ever ask me? No, well, but... Well, that's why I never told you. Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening, Ronald. <laughs> Ronald, this is Edgar. He turned off after all. Oh, well, so you're Edgar. You're uh, quite different than I expect. Pleased to meet you. Thanks. It means he's pleased to meet you, too. You didn't say so. Oh, Porsche, I came up on rather important business. Uh, I'd have been here sooner, only do you know what happened? No. Nothing trivial, I hope. Could we be alone? Oh, why, of course. You're a good, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> business, you know. Who is that boy? Well, that's Ronald Dawson. He's the family attorney. They're not in trouble or something. No, he just handles their legal affairs and that sort of thing. Oh. Well, he sure ain't got no manners. I wouldn't trust that bird as far as I could throw a cow. Well, isn't that odd? I wouldn't either. So they're just continuing Father's book. Yes, and I'm awfully glad I told you last week, Portia. At least you were a bit prepared for the shot. I didn't think they'd do it so quickly. Just all of a sudden like that. Well, I spent the whole afternoon with them, and I assure you I did all I could. Oh, I know, Ronald. Of course, there's nothing you can do. It's only... Well, I just don't know what we're going to do. Portia, we've known each other for quite a few years, haven't we? Well, then you must let me help. How? Well, you knew that your father always insisted upon retaining the copyrights in his own name, didn't you? Yes, and You have power of attorney to act for your mother. Sell me the copyrights. But if the books have stopped being published, why, the copyrights have no value. Yes, I know, but that's not for you to worry about, Portia. And I'm willing to pay, say, $500, and you could use that, couldn't you? Yes, Ronald, but that's charity. Well, not really, Portia. Suppose they ever start publishing again. I'd be more than amply repaid. Ronald, you know as well as I do that once they stop publishing the books, they'll never start again. Nope. It won't do. We just can't accept charity, no matter how kind we are about it. Of course, it'd make me awfully happy to be able to help. And I don't see how you'll manage. Well, we just have to. That isn't so great. Uh, Mr. Smith's firm buys the house. Well, do they intend to? Oh, yes. Mrs. Smith told me tonight. Then after all I guess to pay, there'll be something left over for us. Yes, of course. That's fine. I'm awfully glad to hear it. But, well, those things take time. And in the meanwhile... No, Ronald. It's no use. The lefty asked me if I'd take a note to this story. So I uh, said... My dear, that isn't too late. You mean... <laughs> Okay, Mom. Well, anyway, Lefty asked me if I'd take a note to this skirt, so I says, I'll tell you later. Well, good night. I'm sorry to have to rush off, but... Uh, uh, Lucrezia! What, what's the matter? Didn't you like the party? Sure, I like the party, but listen to this. Lord Michael, Victoria, Marjorie, and Mr. and Mrs. Vandergriff are all coming over here to dinner tomorrow night. Well, that's nice, Lucretia. We haven't been entertaining much lately. You're joking, aren't you, Lucy? No. Don't ask me how it happened. I don't know. It just is, and they're coming. With eight of us and five of them, that makes 13. Well, just ask another man. I'll try to make it all right. Another one? Why, I'd be glad to come, Mrs. Prouty. Now, that's very nice of you, Ronald. See? That's all taken care of. More tea. Well, I think if you'd excuse me, I'll go upstairs and write another verse. <laughs> now, listen, all of you. I don't know how this happened, but Lord Michael and the Vandergrifts are coming here tomorrow night. There's no way we can get out of a decent thing now. After all, it might be my big chance with Lord Michael. Besides, we might all get back into the social swing. Now, if you'll all... Who is this person? Don't tell her. Lucy, that's Edgar. Not... not our Edgar. Suffering cat. What's the matter with her? Well, I'm surprised to see you, Edgar. You know, women always cry when they're happy. Yes. Can you imagine her being that glad to see me? Well, good night, folks. I'm sorry to rush off, but uh, you said that before. You yes, had. So you did. Good night. Well, good night. Come on, Edgar. I'll find you your room. I'll come too. Huh. Say, you think I've forgotten where my own room is? Well, I was here before you kids were born.
14. Dinner for 14. But after all, Mr. Hinkle, you know you've always gotten your money back. Oh, I know you've had to wait for it. But if you'll just send the groceries I ordered this morning, I'll see that you get your money in just a few days. Oh, but I can't right now. And I simply have to have the things for tonight. He said no. Well, we just have to see what we've got, Minnie. Huh. We'll need a magnifying glass to see that. <sighs> Beans. <laughs> so I'll meet up again with her in Burma. Biologically speaking, Burma is not... We're in... way past the biological stage, Alan. Say, you better root that thing up before it starts to grow. Break it up for killing wood. Sure. Where'd you get the paint? It is. It's whitewashed. Is there enough for the whole house? No. Nope. They're coming at night, aren't they? This is all they'll notice. Can I do some? Oh, maybe. Gee, Julie, there isn't much left. Oh, it'll hold out if I paint there. Well, we'll just naturally have to skip cocktails and hors d'oeuvres and start with soup at the table. At least we've got plenty of that. And not two cans alike. Then pray, Minnie. Pray that they'll mix all right and add some meat extract. You see now. That makes soup, sour, potatoes, two vegetables, dessert, and coffee. We can't just ignore meat, can we? We've been ignoring it for a long time. Do you suppose we could be vegetarians? Could be. We are. But we haven't any more vegetables. Hello, Portia. You think you can use some of these? Could we? Oh. Bob, I was never so glad to see anybody in all my life. What are you doing that for? So they can get in tonight. Eh? So the company can get in. So came the collectors. And now they'll never take their hats off. A servant always answers, yes, madam, or very good, sir. Never yes, no, all right, or sure. Do you understand that, Minnie? Sure. Do you think I'm dumb? But you do understand about the place plates, don't you? Well, I don't understand what they're for. Just a lot of expeditions that just sat there. You will remember the sir from the left, won't you? Sure. And you will remember about announcing dinner, Minnie. Not to stand at the door and shout. Come in quietly to Mother and say, dinner is served. Not ready. Never ready. Well, if you don't leave me alone, Lucy, it never will be ready. But Minnie, you have to listen to me. That had better be off for the time being. I'm sure Minnie will remember. Well, we're ready in the dining room. All right. Come on, Portia. Gosh, where'd we ever get 14 glasses to match? We didn't. There's seven of each, and I alternated. Now, I want to explain the season to you. Why us? Because you have to help. Mother's too vague, and Minnie probably make a mess of everything. Now, look. There's some things that have to be, and we can't change. Lacking father, Mother will have to sit at the head of the table. And Lord Michael on her right, of course. And Mr. Vandergriff on her left. Naturally, I'll sit here beside Lord Michael. Do you understand that? Uh -huh. What do I say? I'm coming to that. Now, Edgar, being the eldest son, will sit here at the foot. And Mrs. Vandergriff on his right, and Victoria on his left. Now, you will sit here. And, Alan, you and Marjorie sit here together, between us. Now, Ronald will sit over there, next to Mrs. Vandergriff. And, Portia, I think you and Julie better sit there on either side of Uncle Andrew, and be sure he doesn't grab. We'll do our best. Now, when we come into dinner, we'll all sort of drift naturally to our places, and we can help anybody who has to be near. Don't we men have someone on our arm? Someone we bring into dinner, I mean. 
Alan, you'll have a splint on your arm. This is informal dinner. Well, it's awfully formal to me. Well, there are some things that we have to remember. One, we don't have any rugs because Uncle Andy has hay fever. I'll attend to that. You're right, Julie. Now, that's your department. You see that he sneezes. You think of everything, don't you? Two, the library's been emptied of books because it's being redecorated. There's one still in there. Well, take it out. And three, the lawns are in wildflower because Mother prefers things natural. Now, have you got that? Yep. Now, that takes us down to what we're going to wear, doesn't it? Alan, uh, you have that tux that you got for the prom last year, haven't you? Yes, if I can find it. Well, you'd better. Have you a dinner jacket? Oh, I have something I can use for one. And Uncle Andy, being an invalid, well, he just won't play. Well, that's the best we can do. Well, that takes care of all the men, doesn't it? What about Edwin? Oh, well, he can just wear his uniform. You know, Lucy, I think it's awfully sweet of you to be so nice about Edgar when I know what a disappointment he's been to you. Oh, don't worry about it, Portia. Well, I have a feeling that Edgar won't hurt my party at all. Well, if I have to wear a dress, I suppose it'll be the black serge you got me for Father's funeral. But, um, I've grown quite a lot since. Oh, good heavens, Julie, you've got to have a frock. I'll have to fix over something in mine. Come on. I imagine you look rather well in a dress. Frock to you. Julie, hurry! All right. Hello. Anything I can do? No, thank you. Nothing. Oh, I thought maybe no, I could... No, thank you. My, are you grown? I suppose I'm to be the life of the party. Well, you certainly have a good start. And if they think I'm going to make a fool of myself like this, well, uh, I, I won't, that's all. I'll quit first. Why don't you? Why don't I? I can't, that's why. I haven't had any wages in two years. And they borrowed all the money I did have. Well, here. Do you think uh, that will help? For me? Ah. Uh -huh. Now, do you think you can get through dinner? Can I? And how? There you are. Better not move around too much. What's this going to be? Another fire drill? Harry, listen, Minnie. You don't call us all by our first names, but just put Miss in front of you. Well, what about Alan? Mr. Alan. You see, it's all very simple. Where's Julie? Good evening. May I help you to smile? Oh. My, how nice you look. Oh, don't look at me. You're like a sister. <laughs> Come on. Now, all of you watch the driveway for the car. And Minnie, as soon as they've had time to ring, you go to the door and say good evening. Oh, is it? Why, Uncle Andy, why didn't you say you had a dinner suit? Nobody ever asked me. How nice you look. Eh? Who's a crook? Good evening, everybody. Oh, I see. Good evening, Ronald. Portia, may I see you a moment? It's important. Oh, of course. Well, would you two mind going into the library? I can't have the brand to cut it up at a time like this. All right. And if you all sit down and try to act sort of natural. Oh, not you, Minnie. Great heavens, here comes a car. Talk, talk, make conversation. Well, done. Done. Well, 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 Good evening. Well, done. 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 Any news for me? Plenty. Hey, where's Edgar? How do I know? But after they've waited this long, Ronald, surely you can stall them off for a couple of days more. Porsche, I spent almost an hour in Reynolds' office today. He was adamant. He wasn't trying to be ugly, mind you. And it isn't that he wants the property. Just a payment on the trustee to show good faith. Well, I can't make it. Yes, you can. How? 
My offer still stands, and I'll raise the price. $750 for the copyrights. Reynolds will be taken care of, sale goes through, and you're all right. But the copyrights are worth it. You have your family to think of, Portia. You know, this is awfully sweet of you, Edgar. I really hate to bother you, but if I don't get these things out of the attic now, I never will. Oh, that's all right, Lucy. I'm glad to help you. And now that I'm going to be around home, there's a lot of things I can do for you. Oh, wait a minute, Edgar. I forgot something. I'll be back in just a minute. Okay. You'd have to be a Tarzan to get out of there. The old man. So the publishers are bringing out big new editions in the fall, are they? Well, I don't know what Dawson's game is, but I'll soon find out. Don't you think you'd better let me turn them over to the authorities, Mr. Smith? Oh, not for the world. This is a family affair, Booker. Thanks anyway. But you've done me an awful lot of good. If there's anything else I can do, just let me know. You bet I will. But now I've got to see Mr. Dawson. All right. Good night. Good night. Where's Dawson? Well, I don't know. Probably the Porsche. Oh, great comes. Here comes the car. Quick, get me. Well, well, I... All right. Well, there you are. I knew you'd come to your senses. Here's my check for $750. I still think it's charity. No, no, Portia, you're wrong. Good evening. Well, who's home? Nobody but you. Oh, is that so? So, good evening. Lovely night, isn't it? Where's my money? Now, now, my good man, just take it easy. I can explain anything. Oh, well, everything. I've had enough explaining. I want my money. Hey, we don't want any honey. He said money. I said honey. He wants honey. You'll have to see my sister about it. Just see her. She hasn't any honey either. I want my money and you can't talk me out of it. Well, they're here. Hmm? Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Vandegrift? Good evening, Lucy. It's so nice to see you again. Young man, I want all my right, money. All right, all right. Good evening, Mrs. Prouty. It's a lovely evening. Yes, good evening. Mrs. I want my... You practically got it. And my brother, Alan. How do you do? How do you do? And this is Mr. Prouty. How do you do, Mr. Prouty? Hey. Uncle Andy's a little deaf. I am not. Mother will be down directly. Oh, good evening. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Mother. I didn't see you. Mrs. Vandergift, this is my mother. How do you do? I'm so glad to know you, Mrs. Vandergift. And Mother, this is Victoria, whom I've spoken to. How do you do? <laughs> and this is my baby. I'm delighted to know you. Well, you have nothing to worry about now. I'll take care of everything. They're here. Graham's got Biddle in the kitchen. You better go out and do something about it. Excuse me. Sixty-two, sixty-three, sixty-four, sixty-five. Thanks very much. You know, I wouldn't have thought of butting in here tonight if I had known you were having a party. I'll bet you wouldn't. Well, good night. Sorry to have bothered you. You shouldn't have done that, Graham. But thanks anyway. I'll pay you tomorrow. What's this for? What's Dawson up to now? It hadn't occurred to me it should be interesting. Oh, well, whatever they are, they sing divinely. 
Uh, oh, just put some on the floor, Mr. Vandegrift. You see, we don't have rugs because the library's been redecorated. It's... Oh, no, Alan, that's not it at all. It's because, uh, because Mother prefers things natural. Just with it. Generous her. Never read it. <laughs> Doesn't make much sense, does it? <laughs> I can't think what you're telling my brother. Are you sure he went out? I saw him. edgar has been away for some time, driving a brother. He met an elephant in Siam. Oh, oh a big game hunting. <laughs> How jolly. Uh, do you have much, Lord Michael? Do you like six-day bike races, Lord Michael? Well, I don't believe I've ever seen one. Oh, you should. Stay there. <laughs> well, maybe you shouldn't. Here we go again. <laughs> oh, uh, Miss Vandergriff, we were discussing the spoonovers at Newport. You remember them, don't you? No, I don't believe I do. Neither do I. You weren't there. That's right. Newport's where I didn't go last year. <laughs> I knew the name was familiar. Where else didn't you go? I wouldn't want to say offhand. I'd have to look up my itinerary to be sure. <laughs> Who is that young Mr. Smith who's getting on so painlessly with Victoria? That's Graham Smith. His firm just bought the property on the river, you know. Oh, yes, of course. Eh? <laughs> Mr. Vandergriff just said, of course. Well, he's right. Where is it? I finished my soup. <laughs> but I so seldom get to town. Why well, I haven't been there since they built that new skyscraper. My scraper, Mother. Oh, the same thing. I think we should take Mrs. Crowley to one of your nightclubs, Mr. Vandergriff. She probably enjoyed as much as I did. Oh, I love it. I always wanted to see one of those gangster mollies. And that's how I got my Ranacata <laughs> You say the funniest thing. There's nothing really funny about it. Biologically speaking, the Ranacata is one of the... <laughs> well, after dinner, I'll show you. So, wait a minute. Here it is. Oh, oh Marjorie, what is it? Why, it's only a frog. Well, give it his dinner later, Alice. Alan, you take that thing right out of here. Allow me. Terribly sorry, Miss Adam Marshall. Well, as I say, boys will be boys. <laughs> Are you through, Mr. Uh, Prouty? Eh? Hey. I didn't mean you. I'm talking to Alan. You would give me your brain. Holy mackerel, to dinner. Hey! How perfectly fascinating, Mrs. Crowley. You know, I've always wanted to know something about yogi philosophy. You will speak at one of my Wednesday afternoons, won't you? Oh, Mother would adore to Mrs. Vandergut. What don't you know? Oh, certainly. <laughs> it can't be my comfort. It's probably my bed. Well, here I am. So you are. Why are you were late, Edgar. I'm sorry, Mom, but I found a lot of my old toys in the attic. And I've been having such a swell time, I forgot all about the company. <laughs> this is our brother. <laughs> Edgar, I'd like you to meet Mrs. Vandergriff. How do you do? Is Mrs. Vandergriff? How do you do? Mr. Vandergriff. Oh. And this is not... Don't tell me. I bet it's another Vandergriff. You're wrong. It's Lord Michael. <laughs> that is a surprise. Pleased to meet you, folks. <laughs> yes. I seem to have seen your brother somewhere, but I can't place him. <laughs> well, nobody told me a swell doll like you was going to be here. He means he likes you. Oh, really? Edgar, your face is dirty. Is that so? Well, I don't like yours either. Oh, uh, really, old man. Well, he I... only means your face is dirty. <laughs> Mrs. Vandergriff, have you been south lately? Right. I didn't know you was going to be here. I'd have got myself one of these waiter suits they're wearing. I'm sure you'd look very well in the dinner jacket. You really think so? Imagine that. Of course you're right, Mrs. 
Vandergrift. While the desert is beautiful, unless you have every convenience, it's very dirty. Are you still talking about my face? Don't be silly, Edgar. I'm discussing the desert. Well, maybe we ain't gonna have none. Why should he tell you again, Edgar? He's already said your face is dirty. One more crack about my face and I'm gonna push your teeth in. Uh, really, Edgar, I don't think we have to subject Mrs. Vandergriff and her daughters to that kind of language. So you don't like the way I talk, huh? Well, I don't like the way you talk or nothing else about you, see? And you crack once more about my face being dirty and you're gonna hear the birdies sing. Birdies, Edgar. Okay, Mom, birdies. I think we'd better discuss this thing outside. Now, now, boys, you must fight. Right, we could hardly fight. After all, I'm the heavyweight champion of my club. Hey, that's something. You ain't gonna let that interfere with us, are you? That's up to you. I'm awfully sorry about this unfortunate incident. If you'll excuse you me. You can tell them all that when you come back. So I can. If you come back. Well, yes. Whatever it is you boys are going to do, it should have been done <laughs> Poor Ronald. You see that other <laughs> that way? Hello, Bob. I came in through the kitchen because I thought you'd be eating. I didn't know you had company. Oh, uh, this is Bob Miller, who lives near here. Hello, Bob. Here, sit down and have some supper. Oh, thank you. It's all right. We've got plenty. Yes, do. Why don't you come on up here? One of these places is going to be uh, empty. Thanks, I'll sit here. Did you think they really will fight? Well, I had a good start. Uh, and you helped as much as you could. I? I wish we could see it. You like fights? Love them. <laughs> well, we've been doing so little entertaining lately. But when my husband was alive, we had a house full of company all the time. And of course, he was always giving those reindeer parties. Bag parties, Mother. Oh, one animal or another? What's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that, folks. How do I look? Well, the very nice, Edgar. Is it you? Hey, Porter, this must belong to you. Got your name on it. Let me see that, please. I'll say it's hers. Better tear this up, Portia. Publishers are coming out with larger editions of your father's books in the fall. Are you serious? Quite. Ross has been filching your royalties for years. Oh, I'd like to have a talk with Ronald. You can't now, Porty. No. Well, bring him in, Edgar, and we'll settle all this. I think we should give three cheers for Mr. Prouty. Why don't you give one of those grouch cheers I've heard so much about? <laughs> oh, that's nothing, folks. But thanks anyhow. Thanks. Torpedo Dooley. I knew I remembered you. We saw you fight in the Philippine Islands. You remember Victoria? He knocked out Polish Red in the first round. Of course I remember. That was a grand fight, Mr. Crowley. Oh, yes, sit down, sit down. You must be hungry. Imagine having a fighter in the family. Eh? Edgar's a prize fighter. Heavyweight champion of the Marines. And you never told us? Well, Nobody ever asked. Sure you're able to drive? Certainly I am. Because if you're not, I'll be only too glad to call a police car for you. I'll expect that check for the royalties tomorrow. And don't forget to send that uniform back. Graham, I want to thank you for all you've done for us. As Edgar would say, that ain't nothing meant an awful lot to us, and, well, I, I want you to know how much I, we appreciate it. Oh, well, not that it's for me to suggest, but uh, aren't you neglecting Bob? Bob? What's Bob got to do with anything? Rather a lot, since he's going to marry you. Are you mad? No, not exactly. A little cross, perhaps, but not mad. I didn't know Bob was going to marry anybody. Not even Lucy, whom he wants to marry. He wants to marry Lucy? Oh, yes. I've been very much in love with my sister for a long while. That's beside the point. Your sister? Julie's sister? Besides... Well, that is the point. I don't know what you're talking about, I love Graham. you. Will you marry me? Now, don't say it so suddenly, because it's 24 hours late. Do you love me? Oh, yes. That's it... enough. So I give them a right to the kisser, and then a left to the breadbasket. Then he comes back with a hook on the button that sends it out for the count of nine. <laughs> 
With proper management and good fights, Torpedo, we'll have you a world champ in no time. Now, don't forget, I'm expecting you tomorrow. And we'll start you right away. I'll be there with bells on. <laughs> Will she be there? Also with the bells on. Josh, who'd have thought a swell doll like you would like fights? You're jealous, Mr. Proudy. You know, uh, you're not so bad yourself. You know, you're the first girl I ever knew who wasn't afraid of bugs. <laughs> I think they're cute. You know, you're much handsomer without those glasses on. <laughs> it was sweet of you to take them off for me. Oh, I was going to stop wearing them anyway. Thank you so much, Mrs. Crowley. I've never had a more entertaining evening. Oh, how lovely. I'll expect you Wednesday for luncheon. Of course. And would it be too much to ask for the recipe of that wonderful soup? Well, certainly not. It must be something new. I'm sure we've never had it before. And you will bring some of your lovely poetry, won't you? Yes, I will. Good night and thank you again. I want to thank you so much for a wonderful evening, Mrs. Party, and to ask your permission to take Julia into town to meet my mother. Of course. I've heard so much about going to town. You have a dress, haven't you, Julia? <laughs> well, uh, don't forget, Mike. Six o'clock tomorrow morning down by the river. I can teach you those strokes in no time. I see, Judy. That's one thing I'd never forget. And I'll drive you over, Michael. I'm to meet Alan at six in the morning to catch off after us, Good night. Good night, Lucy. Well, uh, good night, all. Good night. Uh, uh, good night, Miss Crowley. Gee, I think he's swell. Yeah. So I noticed. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. Vandergrift. Goodbye. Good night. Washing dishes. The same ones I've been washing for the last three hours. Well, darling, that's that. Oh, Mother, Graham and I have something to tell you. We're going to be married. That's great. Gee, that's well. <laughs> well that's nice. <laughs> and where are you going to live? Oh, but it'd be too much to ask. Oh, not at all. Right here. I thought so. Mr. and Mrs. Smith return from their picnic honeymoon and make their home with the bride's family. I thought your firm was going to buy the house. Well, couldn't you even put that over? Read this. What is it? Read it. You can read, can't you? Big business brings boom to our city. Graham Smith, owner of the large manufacturing company of Smith & Smith, has found our fair city to be the ideal... Allow me to be the last to congratulate you. Thank you, Minnie. Please don't cry, Lucy. Of course, you'll be real happy. Of course she will. Why shouldn't she? She's going to marry a millionaire, isn't she? Julie will probably marry Lord Michael. Never mind, darling. You've got me. Oh, I have, have I? What are you? A bank clerk. A penniless bank clerk. That's right. That's just what I am. And a lot more. I'm a fool. Or rather, I've been a fool to ever think you were worth caring about. Who do you think you are? Well, I'll tell you. You're a spoiled, selfish, ill-bred little snob. And I wouldn't have you if you were the last girl in the world. It wasn't because I liked it. Because I've been wanting to do that for a long time. Bob! What? There. I've been wanting to do that too, only I didn't know it until now. Lucy! Uncle Andy! Where in the blazes do all the mosquitoes come from? Mosquitoes, Uncle Andy. Eh? I said there aren't any. I know there are many. I asked where they're coming from. There aren't any. No mosquitoes. None. One? <laughs> There's a million. Uncle Andy, mm. will you give me the box I asked you to keep for me? Eh? My box of Sensatelist cannons. Oh. oh, it's broken. Your cannons? There isn't one left, and I had about 40. 
They were good pollock specimens, too. You can get some more, Alan. What were they? Dog fleas. Uncle Andy, you could walk. Of course I can walk, and I'm not your uncle. I've had family life for 30 years. Now I'm sick of it. Before you were born, I came here to collect the debt. Your father asked me to wait. Well, I've waited for 30 years. And now I figure by next week I will have collected it all in room and board. Then I'm going home. And he never told me. Did you uh, ever ask him? No. them off for a couple of days more. Porsche, I spent almost an hour in Reynolds' office today. He was adamant. He wasn't trying to be ugly, mind you. And it isn't that he wants the property. Just a payment on the trustee to show good faith. Well, I can't make it. Yes, you can. How? My offer still stands, and I'll raise the price. $750 for the copyrights. Reynolds will be taken care of, sale goes through, and you're all right. But the copyrights are worth it. You have your family to think of, Porsche. I know this is awfully sweet of you, Edgar. I really hate to bother you, but if I don't get these things out of the attic now, I never will. Oh, that's all right, Lucy. I'm glad to help you. And now that I'm going to be around home, there's a lot of things I can do for you. Oh, wait a minute, Edgar. I forgot something. I'll be back in just a minute. Okay. You have to be a Tarzan to get out of there. So the publishers are bringing out big new editions in the fall, are they? Well, I don't know what Dawson's game is, but I'll soon find out. Don't you think you'd better let me turn them over to the authorities, Mr. Smith? Oh, not for the world. This is a family affair, Booker. Thanks anyway. But you've done me an awful lot of good. If anything else I can do, just let me know. You bet I will. But now I've got to see Mr. Dawson. All right. Good night. Good night. Where's Dawson? Well, I don't know. Probably the Porsche. Oh, great. Comes here. Comes the car. Quick, get me. Well, well, I. All right. You do understand about the place plates, don't you? Well, I don't understand what they're for. Just a lot of expeditions that just sat there. You will remember to serve from the left, won't you? Sure. And you will remember about announcing dinner, Minnie. Not to stand at the door and shout. But to come in quietly to Mother and say, dinner is served. Not ready. Never ready. Well, if you don't leave me alone, Lucy, it never will be ready. But Minnie, you have to let it be. That had better be off for the time being. I'm sure Minnie will remember. Well, we're ready in the dining room. All right. Come on, Portia. Gosh, where'd we ever get 14 glasses to match? We didn't. There's seven of each, and I alternated them. Now, I want to explain the seating to you. Why us? Because you have to help. Mother's too vague, and Minnie probably make a mess of everything. Now, look. There's some things that have to be, and we can't change. Lacking father, mother will have to sit at the head of the table. And Lord Michael on her right, of course. 
And Mr. Van Der on her left. Actually, I'll sit here beside Lord Michael. Do you understand that? Uh -huh. What do I say? I'm coming to that. Now, Edgar, being the eldest son, will sit here at the foot. And Mrs. Vandergriff on his right and Victoria on his left. Now, you will sit here. And Alan, you and Marjorie sit here together between us. Now, Ronald will sit over there next to Mrs. Vandergriff. And Portia, I think you and Julie better sit there on either side of Uncle Andrew and be sure he doesn't grab. We'll do our best. Now, when we come into dinner, we'll all sort of drift naturally to our places. And we can help anybody who has to be near. Don't we men have someone on our arm? Someone we bring into dinner, I mean. Alan, you'll have a splint on your arm. This is an informal dinner. Well, it's awfully formal to me. Well, there are some things that we have to remember. One, we don't have any rugs because Uncle Andy has hay fever. I'll attend to that. You're right, Julie. Now, that's your department. You see that he sneezes. You think of everything, don't you? Two... The library's been emptied of books because it's being redecorated. There's one still in there. Well, take it out. And three, the lawns are in wildflower because Mother the first thing's natural. Now, have you got that? Yep. Now, that takes us down to what we're going to wear, doesn't it? Alan, uh, you have that tux that you got for the prom last year, haven't you? Yes, if I can find it. Well, you'd better. Have you a dinner jacket? Oh, I have something I can use for one. And Uncle Andy, being an invalid, well, he just won't play. Well, that's the best we can do. Well, that takes care of all the men, doesn't it? What about Edgar? Oh, okay. oh, well, he can just wear his uniform. You know, Lucy, I think it's awfully sweet of you to be so nice about Edgar when I know what a disappointment he's been to you. Oh, don't worry about it, Porsche. biology that I could scream. Every time I make myself a dress, oh, I have to... Oh, Lucretia. Did you ever make me that dress out of the blue loincloth I gave you? Broadcloth, Mother. Blue broadcloth. Oh, well, no matter. <laughs> Did you ever... Good morning, Uncle. Good morning, Uncle. That's Uncle Andy. He's deaf. And you better look out for him. He grabs. Like that. Mr. Dawson's coming. Should you do that, Lucretia? Now, when your father was alive... Oh, Mother, she only does mm -hmm. it because Victoria Vandergrift does. There's nothing so bad for the health. Biologically speaking, Lucy, there isn't an... Oh, uh, this Victoria Vandergrift, is she a nice girl, Lucretia? Well, I met Victoria at finishing school, Mother. They've taken the Addison estate for the season. Oh, by the way, it might interest you all to know that the Vandergrifts are the accepted social leaders here. They're planning to entertain Lord Michael Renfrew next week. Oh, good morning, Ronald. Oh, oh hi, hi. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Had your breakfast? Yes, thanks, boy. I left the city. Take a little coffee. Oh, meet Mr. Smith, Mr. Dawson. How do you do? How do you do? Did I understand you to say that the Vandergriffs are here, Lucy? Yes, do you know them? Well, slightly. Met them at Newport last year. Charming girl, Victoria. You found me, too. Well, I am, rather. Worth about 20 million, aren't they? So I've heard. Lovely girl, Victoria. I'd like to see her again. Oh, uh, my dear, why don't you invite this Victoria Van Grift over sometime? Mother, really, you must admit that things aren't quite the same as they were when Father was alive. To say that we've drifted socially is hardly the word. Well, uh, biologically speaking... I wasn't speaking biologically. Ronald won prizes for boxing. How oh, interesting. And he's the heavyweight champion of the Clover Club. Yes, and he's won all kinds of badges, haven't you, Ronald? Medals, Mother. Well, now, really, Mr. Smith, don't get the idea that I'm sort of a Max Berry, you know. I won't. Oh, uh, Mrs. Prouty, I still haven't any news of the boy. The boy? Why, he's even older than Portia. That's our brother, Edgar. When he was 15, he turned up missing right after the circus left town. Now, I'm going to stop wearing them anyway. 
Thank you so much, Mrs. Crowley. I've never had a more entertaining evening. Oh. How lovely. I'll expect you Wednesday for luncheon. Of course. And would it be too much to ask for the recipe of that wonderful soup? Well, certainly not. It must be something new. I'm sure we've never had it before. And you will bring some of your lovely poetry, won't you? Yes, I will. Good night Good and night. thank you again. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for a wonderful evening, Mrs. Party, and to ask your permission to take Julie into town to meet my mother. Of course. I've heard so much about going to town. You have a dress, haven't you, Juliet? <laughs> well, uh, don't forget, Mike. Six o'clock tomorrow morning down by the river. I can teach you those strokes in no time. I see, Julie. That's one thing I'd never forget. And I'll drive you over, Michael. I'm to meet Alan at six in the morning to catch off after us, specimen. Good night. Good night, Lucy. Well, uh, good night, all. Good night. Uh, good night, Miss Crawford. Gee, I think he's swell. Yes. Shall I notice? Mm. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. Vandergrift. Good night. Good night. And where were you when the guests were to be helped with their wraps? Washing dishes. The same ones I've been washing for the last three hours. Well, darling, that's that. Oh, mother. Graham and I have something to tell you. We're going to be married. That's great. Gee, that's well. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> and where are you going to live? Oh, but it'd be too much to ask. Oh, not at all. Right here. I thought so. Mr. and Mrs. Smith return from their picnic honeymoon and make their home with the bride's family. I thought your firm was going to buy the house. Well, couldn't you even put that over? Read this. What is it? Read it. You can read, can't you? Big business brings boom to our city. Graham Smith, owner of the large manufacturing company of Smith & Smith, has found our fair city to be the ideal... <laughs> Allow me to be the last to congratulate you. Thank you, Minnie. Please don't cry, Lucy. Of course, you'll be real happy. Of course she will. Why shouldn't she? She's going to marry a millionaire, isn't she? Julie will probably marry Lord Michael. Never mind, darling. You've got me. Oh, I have, have I? What are you? A bank clerk. A penniless bank clerk. That's right. That's... Because mother, the first thing's natural. Now, have you got that? Yep. Now, that takes us down to what we're going to wear, doesn't it? Alan, uh, you have that tux that you got for the prom last year, haven't you? Yes, if I can find it. Well, you'd better. Have you a dinner jacket? Oh, I have something I can use for one. And Uncle Andy, being an invalid, well, he just won't play. And that's the best we can do. Well, that takes care of all the men, doesn't it? What about Edgar? Oh, okay. oh, well, he can just wear his uniform. You know, Lucy, I think it's awfully sweet of you to be so nice about Edgar when I know what a disappointment he's been to you. Oh, don't worry about it, Portia. Well, I have a feeling that Edgar won't hurt my party at all. Well, if I have to wear a dress, I suppose it'll be the black serge you got me for Father's funeral. But, um, I've grown quite a lot since. Oh, good heavens, Julie, you've got to have a frock. I'll have to fix over something in mine. Come on. I imagine you look rather well in a dress. Frock to you. Julie, hurry! All right. Hello. Anything I can do? No, thank you. Nothing. Oh, I thought maybe no, I could... No, thank you. My, are you grown? I suppose I'm to be the life of the party. Well, you certainly have a good start. And if they think I'm going to make a fool of myself like this, well, uh, I, I won't, that's all. I'll quit first. Why don't you? Why don't I? I can't, that's why. I haven't had any wages in two years. And they borrowed all the money I did have. Well, here. Do you think uh, that will help? For me? Ah. Uh -huh. Now, do you think you can get through dinner? 
Can I? And how? There you are. Better not move around too much. What's this going to be? Another fire drill? Don't call us all by our first names, but just put Miss in front of us. Well, what about Alan? Mr. Alan. You see, it's all very simple. Where's Julie? Good evening. May I help you dismount? Oh. My, how nice you look. Oh, don't look at me. You're like a sister. <laughs> Now, all of you watch the driveway for the car. And, Minnie, as soon as they've had time to ring, you go to the door and say good evening. Oh, is it? Why, Uncle Andy, why didn't you say you had a dinner suit? Nobody ever asked me. How nice you look. Eh? Who's a pan or hinder? To hear the birds that sing upon the bough each morn when I fling open wide my window at winter. So at my open casement every morning of the week, I stand in joyous wonder at the little birds that peep. I think it's a fun. I think it's a burst. Of course, wheat and peep don't exactly rhyme, but that's for its life. Do you have to buy one? No, it's a pity, but you don't. Well, my tooth feels worse. I think it's nice, Mother. Why don't you send it to some magazine? Oh, no, I'm going to keep them all for a book. You think they'll keep that long? Mom! Edgar! Edgar! My <laughs> <coughs> boy! <laughs> Suffering catch you look swell, Mom. Why, your ain't changed a bit in ten years. But Edgar, surely you'll stay to dinner or breakfast or something. Dinner or breakfast, Mom? Why, I'm here to stay. I'm through with shipping. Me but a country life with my family. Oh, my <laughs> boy! <laughs> well, if it ain't 40, Ha! Well, 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 well. And Lucy. Uh, no, Julie, Edgar, Julie. Hi, kid. Hello. Hey, that ain't Ellen. Is yes, it? that's Alan. What can you imagine, Dad? Why, the last time I seen you, you were just starting to stew. Well, no relation. Pleased to meet you anyway. Well, how do you do? Uh, that is, uh, pleased to meet you. Hey, Mom, Porty, come over here. <laughs> Sit down. Tell me what you've been doing all this time. Oh, you we want to hear about, Edgar. Yes. Well, I'll tell you. The first job I got was with a circus, carrying water for the elephant. The biggest one there, named was Jumbo. Me and him got to be great pals. Well, that's nice. <laughs> Yes, yes. You know, I think it's charming here. Yes, it is nice here now. It's very dull here. Really? I should have thought it would have been jolly with the snow and all. Well, really, I don't know much about it. You see, we usually went to elsewhere. Hello, Victoria. This is a simply charming party. I hope so. Everybody does seem to be having a good time, or at least being very polite about it. Do be nice and say you're having a good time, Michael. Oh, I'm having the most delightful time imaginable. I only hope Miss Prouty isn't exhausted entertaining me. I shan't bother to answer that. That reminds me, Lucy. I'm going to... I get to see. Look, will you be a darling and fix one of my rings for me? It's the one next to the one you fixed yesterday. Why, well, surely, Julie. I'll fix it the first thing in the morning. Yeah, can't you fix it tonight? I, I want to practice a new trick and I can't do it with all that leather stuff hanging on. Go ahead, Graham. I'll finish the dishes. Gee, thanks, Portia. Hurry up. Don't forget our walk, Portia. I have something very important to ask you. I will. Portia! Would you mind doing the other? Of course not. Well, I'll go fix Julie's rings. Uh, you won't be long, will you? I won't. And don't forget your apron. Oh, <laughs> thanks. You don't seem to be doing so badly. Meaning? You're just a type, Mrs. Smith. I'm on my way to the Vandergrift. Sorry for Lord Michael. And you look lovely for him. I'll say he does. I hardly think I'd care to arrive. Well, I could let you off a little way from the house if you like. 
You think Lucy will ever care for me, Portia? I mean, in a big way? No. As long as you let her make such a sass out of you, she'll never care for you. Why didn't you tell her you didn't care if she ever saw you again? Well, I couldn't do that, Portia. She might get mad at me. Besides, I do care. But I don't think there's any hope for you. That was the fastest record ever achieved by a woman. Now, you take Annette Carlin, for instance. You take her. I've got to get some tape. Okay. I'm sorry, Bob. But it's for your own good. I know Lucy used to be fond of you. I think she still is. But all women like their feeling, Bob. Why, a little flirtation now and then does the world is good. It's nice to know somebody else is interested, even if you don't intend to take them seriously. But love doesn't change. Now, mind you, I'm not saying Lucy ever was in love with you. But if she was, she still is. And it would help a lot if you showed a little spunk now and then. Well, I don't know if I can, but anyhow, thanks a lot. Well, I'm ready. Good night, Roger. Good night, dear. Have a good time. Come along, Mom. Good night, Roger. Good night, Bob. Julie. Yeah? Who was that I just saw in the kitchen? Well, no, I wouldn't know exactly. Did she have red hair or was he wearing a long gray beard? No, he was a young man. A very nice looking young man. Oh, Bob. Bob Miller. He's always... Hey. Now, Mr. McFadden says that physical culture is the only... Oh, way. I'm so sick of physical culture and biology that I could scream. Every time I make myself a dress, oh, I have to... Oh, it's Lucretia. Did you ever make me that dress out of the blue loin cloth I gave you? Broadcloth, Mother. Blue broadcloth. Oh, well, no matter. <laughs> Did you ever make... Morning, Uncle. Good morning, Uncle. That's Uncle Andy. He's deaf. And you better look out for him. He grabs. Like that. Mr. Dawson's coming. Should you do that, Lucretia? Now, when your father was alive... Oh, Mother, she only does it because Victoria Vandergrift does. There's nothing so bad for the health. Biologically speaking, Lucy, there isn't an... Oh, uh, this Victoria Vandergrift, is she a nice girl, Lucretia? Well, I met Victoria at finishing school, Mother. They've taken the Addison estate for the season. Oh, by the way, it might interest you all to know that the Vandergrifts are the accepted social leaders here. They are planning to entertain Lord Michael Renfrew next week. Oh, good morning, Ronald. Oh, oh hi, Ronald. Good morning. Good morning. Had your breakfast? Yes, thanks, boy. I left the city. Take a little coffee. Oh, meet Mr. Smith, Mr. Dawson. How do you do? How do you do? Did I understand you to say that the Vandergrifts are here, Lucy? Yes, do you know them? Well, slightly. Met them at Newport last year. Charming girl, Victoria. You found me, too. Well, I am, rather. Worth about 20 million, aren't they? So I've heard. Lovely girl, Victoria. I'd like to see her again. Oh, uh, my dear, why don't you invite this Victoria Van Grift over sometime? Mother, really, you must admit that things aren't quite the same as they were when Father was alive. To say that we've drifted socially is hardly the word. Well, uh, biologically speaking... I wasn't speaking biologically. Ronald won prizes for boxing. How oh, interesting. And he's the heavyweight champion of the Clover Club. Yes, and he's won all kinds of badges, haven't you, Ronald? Medals, Mother. Well, now, really, Mr. Smith, don't get the idea that I'm sort of a Max Berry, you know. I won't. Oh, uh, Mrs. Crowdy, I still haven't any news of the boy. The boy? Why, he's even older than Portia. That's our brother, Edgar. When he was 15, he turned up missing right after the circus left town. Ah, mark my words. That boy has made something of himself by now. Have you heard from him? Well, uh, no, but he has his father's name and the same shape has. Well, this isn't getting my lepidopteral mounted. 
Well, uh, tell me, Ronald, did you come all the way from town just to tell me you'd had no news of Edgar? No, as a matter of fact... Oh, one animal or another, what's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that, folks. How do I look? Well, the very nice, Edgar. Is it you? Hey, boy, this must belong to you. It's got your name on it. Let me see that, please. I'll say it's hers. Better tear this up for you. Publishers are coming out with larger editions of your father's books in the fall. Are you serious? Quite. Ross has been filching your royalties for years. Oh, I'd like to have a talk with Ronald. You can't now, Porty. No. Well, bring him in, Edgar, and we'll settle all this. I think we should give three cheers for Mr. Prouty. Why don't you give one of those Bronx cheers I've heard so much about? Ah, <laughs> oh, that's nothing, folks. But thanks anyhow. Hey. Torpedo Dooley. I knew I remembered you. We saw you fight in the Philippine Islands. You remember Victoria? He knocked out Polish Red in the first round. Of course I remember. That was a grand fight, Mr. Charlie. Here, yeah, sit down, sit down. You must be hungry. Imagine having a fighter in the family. Eh? Edgar's a prize fighter. Heavyweight champion of the Marines. And you never told us? Well, Nobody ever asked. You. Sure you're able to drive? Certainly I am. Because if you're not, I'll be only too glad to call a police car for you. I'll expect that check for the royalties tomorrow. And don't forget to send that uniform back. Graham, I want to thank you for all you've done for us. As Edgar would say, that ain't nothing. It meant an awful lot to us. And, well, I, I want you to know how much I, we appreciate it. Well, not that it's for me to suggest, but... Uh, Aren't you neglecting Bob? Bob? What's Bob got to do with anything? Rather a lot, since he's going to marry you. Are you mad? No. Not exactly. A little cross, perhaps, but not mad. I didn't know Bob was going to marry anybody. Not even Lucy, whom he wants to marry. He wants to marry Lucy? Oh, yes. He's been very much in love with my sister for a long while. That's beside the point. Your sister? Julie's sister? Besides, well, that is the point. I don't know what you're talking about, I love Graham. you. Will you marry me? Now, don't say it so sudden, because it's 24 hours late. Do you love me? Oh, yes. That's enough. It... So I give them a right to the kisser, and then a left to the bread basket. Then he comes back with a hook on the button that sends me down for the count of nine. <laughs> with proper management and good fights, Torpedo, we'll have you a world's champ in no time. Now, don't forget, I'm expecting you tomorrow. Oh. Say, it's a good buy for the money. They do, do they? Well, we'll see. Are you going to drive on up? Yeah. Gates won't work. How far did you say it was from the station? Two miles. <laughs> Reckon you're not used to rough roads. <laughs> well, the roads didn't look so bad. But this Lizzie of yours certainly makes mountains out of molehills. Used to belong to Edgar Allen Prouty. The car? And all the house. You must have heard of him, ain't you? Wrote over 40 books. That's a powerful lot of writing. Uh, be a pal and take that to the hotel, will you? Sure, sure. Nice situation, ain't it? I suppose so. I'll be able to see better when my foot wakes up. Well, so long. So long. You'll probably find 
find them upstairs. But I didn't kill You're sure to find them. They make an enormous leak somewhere. But I'm not the man for the rods. I... No, he was a young man. A very nice looking young man. Oh, Bob! Bob Miller. He's always around. He seems to be very much interested in your sister, doesn't he? Interested? I'll say he is. He's been nuts about her for years. And she? Oh, I don't know. She used to be crazy about him, too. Anyway, she'll probably marry him if she can't do any better. Oh. Well, there you are. Gee, Graham, thanks a million. Well, I'm all ready. Ready? Yes. You want me to take a walk? Oh, yes. Yes, a walk. Of course, if, if you're busy or anything. Oh, no. No, by all means, let's uh, take a walk. You used to seem to like me. Oh, this is all very silly, Bob. I've told you a thousand times that there's nobody I like better than you. I just wasn't made for poverty. But I won't always be poor. I know I'm only a bank clerk, but I will get somewhere. Well, that's exactly what I mean. All the years of planning and scrimping and working, I just couldn't do it. Anyway, I've got a party to get to. Thanks for the buggy ride. Oh, no, please don't. Hadn't I better walk up with you? Certainly not. Good night, Bob. Lucy! Good night. And Uncle Andy, uh, how much of a relative is he? To tell you the truth, I don't really know. I've always thought he was father's uncle. Has he always been paralyzed? No. The funny thing. Father was ailing during his last year, and he had to get that chair. And right after his death, Uncle Andy had a stroke, and he's been using it ever since. Well, here we are. Yes, so we are. We didn't take a very long walk, did we? No, we didn't, did we? No. No. Lovely evening, is it? Huh? Lovely evening. Well, don't shout. You think I'm deaf? Well... I guess I shouldn't have mentioned it. Oh, there you are, Portia. Yes, Mother. Portia, my dear, will you be good enough to gather the entire family together in the drawing room? I have an announcement of importance to me. You too, young man. Of course, Mother. Oh, that's Hindu for Abyssin. Oh, whether or not the house is suitable for your firm. Exactly. There, that's settled. that I could scream. Every time I make myself a dress, oh, I have to... Oh, look Lucrezia. Did you ever make me that dress out of the blue loin cloth I gave you? Broadcloth, Mother. Blue broadcloth. Oh, well, no matter. <laughs> Did you ever make Uncle? Good morning, Uncle. That's Uncle Andy. He's deaf. And you better look out for him. He grabs. Like that. Mr. Dawson's coming. 
should you do that in Crete? Now, when your father was alive... Oh, Mother, she only does it because Victoria Vandergrift does. There's nothing so bad for the health. Biologically speaking, Lucy, there isn't an... Oh, uh, this Victoria Vandergrift, is she a nice girl, Lucretia? Well, I met Victoria at finishing school, Mother. They've taken the Addison estate for the season. Oh, by the way, it might interest you all to know that the Vandergrift are the accepted social leaders here. They're planning to entertain Lord Michael Renfrew next week. Oh, good morning, Ronald. Oh, how are you, Good morning. Good morning. Had your breakfast? Yes, thanks, boy. I left the city. Take a little coffee. Oh, meet Mr. Smith, Mr. Dawson. How do you do? How do you do? Can I understand you to say that the Vandergrifts are here, Lucy? Yes, do you know them? Well, slightly. Met them at Newport last year. Charming girl, Victoria. You found me, too. Well, I am, rather. Worth about 20 million, aren't they? So I've heard. Lovely girl, Victoria. I'd like to see her again. Oh, uh, my dear, why don't you invite this Victoria Van Grift over sometime? Mother, really, you must admit that things aren't quite the same as they were when Father was alive. To say that we've drifted socially is hardly the word. Well, uh, biologically speaking... I wasn't speaking biologically. Ronald won prizes for boxing. How oh, interesting. And he's the heavyweight champion of the Clover Club. Yes, and he's won all kinds of badges, haven't you, Ronald? Medals, Mother. Well, now, really, Mr. Smith, don't get the idea that I'm sort of a Max Berry, you know. I won't. Oh, uh, Mrs. Prouty, I still haven't any news of the boy. The boy? Mother will be down directly. Oh, good evening. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mother, I didn't see you. Mrs. Vandergrift, this is my mother. How do you do? I'm so glad to know you, Mrs. Vandergrift. And, Mother, this is the... Victoria, who I've spoken to. Oh, yes. How do you do? <laughs> and this is my baby. I'm delighted to know you. Well, you have nothing to worry about now. I'll take care of everything. They're here. Graham's got Biddle in the kitchen. You better go out and do something about it. Excuse me. Sixty-two, six. Sixty-three, six, four, sixty-five. Thanks very much. You know, I wouldn't have thought of butting in here tonight if I had known you were having a party. I'll bet you wouldn't. Well, good night. Sorry to have bothered you. You shouldn't have done that, Graham. But thanks anyway. I'll pay you tomorrow. What's this for? What's Dawson up to now? You hadn't occurred to me it should be interesting.
Well, they've had time to rain. Well, well, it's most Don't forget the good evening. I won't. Good evening. It sure is, sister. Is Mr. Smith here? He is. Oh, Booker. Any news for me? Plenty. Hey, where's Edgar? How do I know? But after they've waited this long, Ronald, surely you can stall them off for a couple of days more. Porsche, I spent almost an hour in Reynolds' office today. He was adamant. He wasn't trying to be ugly, mind you. And it isn't that he wants the property. Just a payment on the trustee to show good faith. Well, I can't make it. Yes, you can. How? My offer still stands, and I'll raise the price. $750 for the copyrights. Reynolds will be taken care of, sale goes through, and you're all right. But the copyrights are worth it. You have your family to think of, Portia. You know, this is awfully sweet of you, Edgar. I really hate to bother you, but if I don't get these things out of the attic now, I never will. Oh, that's all right, Lucy. I'm glad to help you. And now that I'm going to be around home, there's a lot of things I can do for you. Oh, wait a minute, Edgar. I forgot something. I'll be back in just a minute. Okay. You'd have to be a Tarzan to get out of there. So the publishers are bringing out big new editions in the fall, are they? Well, I don't know what Dawson's game is, but I'll soon find out. Don't you think you'd better let me turn him over to the authorities, Mr. Smith? Oh, not for the world. This is a family affair, Booker. Thanks anyway. But you've done me an awful lot of good. If there's anything else I can do, just let me know. You bet I will. But now I've got to see Mr. Dawson. All right. Good night. Good night. Where's Dawson? Well, I don't know. Probably the Porsche. Oh, great. Comes here comes a car. Quick, get me. Well, well, I... All right. Well, there you are. I knew you'd come to your senses. Here's my check for $750. I still think it's charity. No, no, Porsche. You're wrong. Well, good night. Sorry to have bothered you. You shouldn't have done that, Graham. But thanks anyway. I'll pay you tomorrow. What's this for? What's Dawson up to now? It hadn't occurred to me that you'd be interested. I've ever seen one. Oh, you should. Stay there. <laughs> well, maybe you shouldn't. Here we go again. <laughs> oh, uh, Miss Vandergriff, we were discussing the spoonovers at Newport. You remember them, don't you? No, I don't believe I do. Neither do I. 
You weren't there. That's right. Newport's where I didn't go last year. I knew the name was familiar. Where else didn't you go? I wouldn't want to say offhand. I'd have to look up my itinerary to be sure. <laughs> Who is that young Mr. Smith who's getting on so painlessly with Victoria? That's Graham Smith. His firm just bought the property on the river, you know. Oh, yes, of course. Huh? Eh? <laughs> Mr. Vandergriff just said, of course. Well, he's right. Where is it? I finished my soup. But I so seldom get to town. Why well, I haven't been there since I built that new skyscraper. My scraper, Mother. Oh, the same thing. I think we should take Mrs. Crowley to one of your nightclubs, Mr. Vandergriff. She probably enjoyed as much as I did. Oh, I'd 